Marcus Aurelius said, Loss is nothing else but change, and change is nature's delight. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Questions That Will Change Your Life. Today, we are going to explore the ancient philosophy of Stoicism and how it can help us live better, happier, and more meaningful lives. Stoicism is a school of thought that originated in Greece and Rome and was practiced by some of the most influential figures in history, such as Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, and Cato the Younger. Stoicism teaches us how to deal with the challenges and uncertainties of life by focusing on what we can control and accepting what we cannot. Stoicism also helps us cultivate virtues such as wisdom, courage, justice and self-control, which are essential for living well. Stoicism is not a religion, nor a dogma, nor a set of rules. It is a way of life, a mindset, a practice. It is something that we can apply to any situation, any circumstance, any emotion. It is something that we can learn from and improve upon every day. But how can we do that? How can we become more stoic and more resilient in the face of adversity? How can we overcome our negative emotions and find peace and happiness within ourselves? How can we live according to our true nature and our highest potential? The answer is simple, by asking ourselves the right questions. Questions are powerful tools that can help us examine our thoughts, beliefs, actions, and emotions. Questions can help us gain clarity, insight, perspective, and understanding. Questions can help us challenge our assumptions, biases, and prejudices. Questions can help us grow, change, and transform. In this video, we are going to share with you 11 questions that will help you practice Stoicism and apply its principles to your daily life. These questions are not meant to be answered once and for all, but to be revisited and reflected upon regularly. These questions are not meant to be easy, but to be challenging and stimulating. These questions are not meant to be comfortable, but to be uncomfortable and confronting. Let's begin. What is in your power and what is not? This is the fundamental question of Stoicism and the basis of its logic. The Stoics believed that the only thing that is truly in our power is our own mind, our own judgments, our own decisions. Everything else, such as our body, our health, our wealth, our reputation, our relationships, our circumstances, are external to us and beyond our complete control. They are subject to change, decay, loss and interference from others. They are not good or bad in themselves, but only as we perceive them. The Stoics advised us to focus on what is in our power and to act with virtue, reason and excellence. They also advised us to accept what is not in our power and to embrace it with gratitude, detachment and equanimity. They taught us to distinguish between what we can control and what we cannot, and to act accordingly. As Epictetus said, some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and in one word, whatever are not our own actions. So ask yourself, what is in your power and what is not? How do you spend your time, energy and attention? Do you focus on what you can control or on what you cannot? Do you act with virtue, reason and excellence or with vice, irrationality and mediocrity? Do you accept what is not in your power or do you resist, complain and suffer? What is the worst that can happen and how can you prepare for it? This is another key question of Stoicism and the basis of its physics. The Stoics believed that the universe is governed by a rational and providential order, which they called logos, or nature. They believed that everything happens for a reason and that everything is interconnected and interdependent. They believed that we are part of this cosmic order and that we have a duty to live in harmony with it and to fulfill our role in it. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is unpredictable and that many things can go wrong or not according to our plans. 
They realized that life is full of hardships, difficulties and dangers, and that we need to be ready to face them. They practiced a technique called premeditation of evils, or negative visualization, which consists of imagining the worst possible scenarios and how we would cope with them. This technique helps us to reduce our fear, anxiety and attachment, and to increase our courage, confidence and gratitude. As Seneca said, nothing happens to the wise man against his expectation. So, Ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen and how can you prepare for it? What are the potential risks, threats and challenges that you may encounter in your life? How would you react, respond and adapt to them? How can you use them as opportunities for learning, growth and improvement? What is the best that can happen and how can you achieve it? This is a complementary question of Stoicism and the basis of its ethics. The Stoics believed that the highest good and the ultimate goal of life is to live according to virtue or excellence of character. They believed that virtue is the only thing that can make us truly happy, fulfilled and free and that it is within our reach if we choose to pursue it. They believed that virtue consists of four main qualities, wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control, which they called the cardinal virtues. They believed that these virtues can be cultivated, practiced, and applied to any situation, and that they can guide us to the best possible outcomes. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of opportunities and that many things can go right or according to our wishes. They realize that life is full of blessings, joys and pleasures, and that we need to appreciate them. They practiced a technique called premeditation of goods, or positive visualization, which consists of imagining the best possible scenarios and how we would achieve them. This technique helps us to increase our motivation, optimism and creativity, and to reduce our complacency, ingratitude and dissatisfaction. As Marcus Aurelius said, do not dream of possession of what you do not have. Rather reflect on the greatest blessings in what you do have and on their account remind yourself how much they would have been missed if they were not there. So ask yourself, what is the best that can happen and how can you achieve it? What are the potential opportunities, benefits and rewards that you may encounter in your life? How would you act, pursue and enjoy them? How can you use them as incentives for excellence, gratitude and generosity? What is the most important thing and how can you prioritize it? This is a crucial question of Stoicism and the basis of its logic. The Stoics believed that the only thing that is truly important is our own mind, our own judgments, our own decisions. Everything else such as our body, our health, our wealth, our reputation, our relationships, our circumstances are indifferent or irrelevant to our happiness and well-being. They are not good or bad in themselves, but only as we perceive them. The Stoics advised us to prioritize what is important and to act with virtue, reason and excellence. They also advised us to deprioritize what is indifferent and to accept it with gratitude, detachment and equanimity. They taught us to distinguish between what is essential and what is not and to act accordingly. As Epictetus said, don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will, then your life will flow well. So, ask yourself, what is the most important thing and how can you prioritize it? How do you spend your time, energy and attention? Do you focus on what is essential or on what is not? Do you act with virtue, reason and excellence or with vice, irrationality and mediocrity? Do you prioritize what is important or do you procrastinate, distract and avoid it? What is the most rational thing and how can you reason it? This is another essential question of Stoicism and the basis of its physics. 
The Stoics believed that the universe is governed by a rational and providential order, which they called Logos, or nature. They believed that everything happens for a reason, and that everything is interconnected and interdependent. They believed that we are part of this cosmic order, and that we have a duty to live in harmony with it and to fulfill our role in it. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is complex and that many things are beyond our comprehension. They realize that life is full of mysteries, paradoxes and contradictions and that we need to understand them. They practiced a technique called dialectic or logical reasoning, which consists of examining, analyzing and evaluating arguments, evidence. They practiced a technique called dialectic or logical reasoning, which consists of examining, analyzing, and evaluating arguments, evidence, and hypotheses. This technique helps us to increase our knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, and to reduce our ignorance, confusion, and error. As Marcus Aurelius said, if it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. So, ask yourself, what is the most rational thing, and how can you reason it? How do you think, speak, and act? Do you use logic, evidence, and critical thinking, or do you rely on emotions, opinions, and biases? Do you seek to learn, understand, and improve, or do you settle for ignorance, confusion, and error? Do you reason with yourself and with others, or do you argue, quarrel, and dispute? What is the most courageous thing, and how can you do it? This is another important question of Stoicism and the basis of its ethics. The Stoics believed that the highest good and the ultimate goal of life is to live according to virtue or excellence of character. They believed that virtue is the only thing that can make us truly happy, fulfilled and free, and that it is within our reach if we choose to pursue it. They believe that virtue consists of four main qualities, wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control, which they called the cardinal virtues. They believe that these virtues can be cultivated, practiced, and applied to any situation, and that they can guide us to the best possible outcomes. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of challenges and that many things can go wrong or not according to our plans. They realize that life is full of hardships, difficulties, and dangers, and that we need to face them. They practice a technique called endurance, or facing fear, which consists of doing what is right, even if it is difficult, risky, or painful. This technique helps us to increase our courage, confidence, and resilience, and to reduce our fear, anxiety, and cowardice. As Seneca said, it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that things are difficult. So, ask yourself, what is the most courageous thing and how can you do it? How do you face the challenges, difficulties and dangers in your life? Do you do what is right, even if it is difficult, risky or painful, or do you avoid escape or compromise? Do you act with courage, confidence, and resilience, or with fear, anxiety, and cowardice? Do you endure what is hard, or do you give up what is good? What is the most just thing, and how can you do it? This is another vital question of Stoicism and the basis of its ethics. The Stoics believe that the highest good and the ultimate goal of life is to live according to virtue or excellence of character. They believed that virtue is the only thing that can make us truly happy, fulfilled, and free, and that it is within our reach if we choose to pursue it. They believed that virtue consists of four main qualities, wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control, which they called the cardinal virtues. They believed that these virtues can be cultivated, practiced, and applied to any situation, and that they can guide us to the best possible outcomes. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of diversity and that many things are different or not according to our preferences. They realized that life is full of people, animals and things 
and that we need to interact with them. They practiced a technique called cosmopolitanism, or being a citizen of the world, which consists of treating everyone and everything with respect, kindness, and fairness. This technique helps us to increase our justice, compassion, and generosity, and to reduce our injustice, cruelty, and selfishness. As Marcus Aurelius said, we were born to work together like feet, hands, and eyes, like the two rows of teeth, upper and lower. To obstruct each other is unnatural. To feel anger at someone, to turn your back on him, these are unnatural. So ask yourself, what is the most just thing and how can you do it? How do you interact with the people, animals, and things in your life? Do you treat them with respect, kindness, and fairness, or with disrespect, cruelty, and injustice? Do you act with justice, compassion, and generosity, or with injustice, indifference, and selfishness? Do you cooperate with others, or do you compete with them? What is the most self-controlled thing, and how can you do it? This is another crucial question of Stoicism and the basis of its ethics. The Stoics believed that the highest good and the ultimate goal of life is to live according to virtue or excellence of character. They believed that virtue is the only thing that can make us truly happy, fulfilled and free and that it is within our reach if we choose to pursue it. They believed that virtue consists of four main qualities wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control, which they called the cardinal virtues. They believed that these virtues can be cultivated, practiced, and applied to any situation, and that they can guide us to the best possible outcomes. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of temptations, and that many things can go astray or not according to our values. They realized that life is full of desires, passions and impulses, and that we need to master them. They practiced a technique called asceticism, or self-discipline, which consists of restraining, moderating and regulating our appetites, emotions and actions. This technique helps us to increase our self-control, moderation and harmony, and to reduce our self-indulgence, excess and discord. As Epictetus said, no man is free who is not master of himself. So ask yourself, what is the most self-controlled thing and how can you do it? How do you manage your desires, passions and impulses in your life? Do you restrain, moderate and regulate them? Or do you indulge, overdo and lose control of them? Do you act with self-control, moderation and harmony? Or with self-indulgence, excess and discord? Do you master yourself or do you enslave yourself? What is the most wise thing and how can you do it? This is another key question of Stoicism and the basis of its ethics. The Stoics believed that the highest good and the ultimate goal of life is to live according to virtue or excellence of character. They believed that virtue is the only thing that can make us truly happy, fulfilled and free, and that it is within our reach if we choose to pursue it. They believed that virtue consists of four main qualities, wisdom, courage, justice and self-control, which they called the cardinal virtues. They believed that these virtues can be cultivated, practiced and applied to any situation and that they can guide us to the best possible outcomes. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of complexity and that many things are beyond our comprehension. They realized that life is full of mysteries, paradoxes and contradictions and that we need to understand them. They practiced a technique called philosophy or love of wisdom, which consists of studying, learning and applying the principles of logic, physics and ethics. This technique helps us to increase our wisdom, understanding and insight and to reduce our ignorance, confusion and error. As Seneca said, philosophy is not an occupation of a popular nature, nor is it pursued for the sake of self-advertisement. Its concern is not with words, but with facts. It is not carried on with the object of passing the day in an entertaining sort of way and taking the boredom out of leisure. It molds and builds the personality, 
orders one's life, regulates one's conduct, shows one what one should do and what one should leave undone, sits at the helm and keeps one on the correct course as one is tossed about in perilous seas. Without it, no one can lead a life free of fear or worry. So, ask yourself, what is the most wise thing and how can you do it? How do you study, learn and apply the principles of logic, physics and ethics in your life? Do you seek to increase your wisdom, understanding and insight, or do you settle for ignorance, confusion and error? Do you practice philosophy or love of wisdom, or do you neglect, despise or misuse it? Do you live according to reason or according to passion? What is the most grateful thing, and how can you do it? This is another key question of Stoicism and the basis of its physics. The Stoics believed that the universe is governed by a rational and providential order, which they called Logos, or nature. They believed that everything happens for a reason, and that everything is interconnected and interdependent. They believed that we are part of this cosmic order, and that we have a duty to live in harmony with it, and to fulfill our role in it. The Stoics also recognized that the universe is full of blessings, and that many things can go right or according to our wishes. They realize that life is full of joys, pleasures and opportunities, and that we need to appreciate them. They practiced a technique called gratitude, or being thankful, which consists of acknowledging, expressing and celebrating the good things that we have, receive and experience. This technique helps us to increase our happiness, satisfaction and generosity, and to reduce our unhappiness, dissatisfaction and selfishness. As Seneca said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. So ask yourself, what is the most grateful thing, and how can you do it? How do you acknowledge, express, and celebrate the good things in your life? Do you appreciate what you have, receive, and experience, or do you take them for granted, ignore, or complain about them? Do you act with gratitude, satisfaction, and generosity, or with ingratitude, dissatisfaction, and selfishness? Do you enjoy the present? Or do you worry about the future? What is the most detached thing and how can you do it? This is another key question of Stoicism and the basis of its logic. The Stoics believed that the only thing that is truly in our power is our own mind, our own judgments, our own decisions. Everything else, such as our body, our health, our wealth, our reputation, our relationships, our circumstances, are external to us and beyond our complete control. They are subject to change, decay, loss and interference from others. They are not good or bad in themselves, but only as we perceive them. The Stoics advised us to detach ourselves from what is not in our power and to accept it with gratitude, detachment and equanimity. They also advised us to attach ourselves to what is in our power and to act with virtue, reason and excellence. They taught us to distinguish between what we can control and what we cannot and to act accordingly. As Epictetus said, Attach yourself to what is superior, and you will become superior. Attach yourself to what is inferior, and you will become inferior. So ask yourself, what is the most detached thing, and how can you do it? How do you relate to the external things in your life? Do you detach yourself from them, and accept them with gratitude, detachment, and equanimity, or do you attach yourself to them and depend on them for your happiness, well-being, and identity? Do you act with virtue, reason, and excellence, or with vice, irrationality, and mediocrity? Do you attach yourself to what is superior, or to what is inferior? Stoicism is a powerful and practical philosophy that can help us live better, happier, and more meaningful lives. By asking ourselves these 11 questions, we can practice Stoicism and apply its principles to our daily life.
These questions are not meant to be answered once and for all, but to be revisited and reflected upon regularly. These questions are not meant to be easy, but to be challenging and stimulating. These questions are not meant to be comfortable, but to be uncomfortable and confronting. These questions are meant to change your life, but don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Experiment with these questions and see how they affect your thoughts, emotions, and actions. See how they affect your happiness, well-being, and freedom. See how they affect your relationships, your work, and your goals. See how they affect your life. And then, share your experience with me and with others. I would love to hear from you and to learn from you. What did you find most helpful, most surprising, most challenging, most rewarding? What did you discover? What did you change? What did you achieve? What are your questions, your doubts, your suggestions, your feedback? Please leave a comment below and let me know. And like if you enjoy this video and subscribe for more content like this. I appreciate your support and your participation. Thank you for watching, and until next time, remember, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts.